Hi guys, this is Chichi back again with another episode on Chicharito. So today I'll be talking about the EPF Members Investment Scheme or uh, in short form MIS, I stated uh, in my thumbnail. Basically what this Member Investment Scheme is, you know, you got your EPF savings account, right? You know, you contribute it to it every month, you may employ as well. So you got this savings fund, you know, where the uh, Malaysian Sovereign uh, Wealth Fund actually invests it to actually grow your retirement savings such that when you retire, you have, you know, uh, a decent amount of money that you should retire with right for your health expenses you know your food utilities etc so basically uh, i'm trying to say is that you know okay you have the government to actually help invest you know, but the yields are you not know, like like a stable uh, approximately four to six percent or seven percent each i think that was the high uh, for the past uh, five to ten years i'll be showing a chart after this but let's say i was trying to you know uh, see what else we can do you know so this uh, members investment scheme actually came to light uh, last year i think uh, probably 2020, I think it was around March, I think, because my colleagues you know, were talking about it, but you know, I did not have the eligible amount to actually you know, uh, have a certain uh, uh, portfolio allocation towards it, because EPF actually sets a rule as to how much eligible amount you have to actually do this. So recently, I only had this eligible amount of sort of activated after working for around three years, so we actually need some time to accumulate the uh, amount of money, and uh, EPF doesn't really allow you much to invest. But that's it, even though it's a small allocation, right, you can actually put it into good use, which is the MIS, which actually allows you to invest in like, not just in your typical uh, uh, stable stocks, and you get to invest in Malaysian micro cap stocks, you know, which have, which have the potential to grow, you know, skyrocket, uh, as well as even overseas stocks, you know, that's what I'm going to talk about today, more towards uh, funds which are based in like, overseas countries like China. So without further ado, and I'm not trying to confuse you too much, just you know, run through the uh, slides on what I'm going to explain today. So guys, as usual, I'll show you a 3 second display of the disclaimer for your info, you know, and for my safety. And let's proceed. So, as mentioned earlier, what are EPF's returns historically? So if we actually look at this chart here, which is the EPF dividend rates chart, you know, where how much returns, you know, per annum per year they give you on top of your uh, retirement savings fund in your EPF account from years uh, 2008 to, whoops, sorry, to 2019 uh, with the source being a uh, ringgit plus we can see that you know there actually was a rise in the dividends you know from 2008 to 2014 before they, you know we took a dip in 2016 and you know there's a rise again in 2017 oh hey 6.9 and dropping down again to 5.45 you know due to like the bad years that we experienced you know in 2019 as well as 2020 2020 i think was a uh, slightly lower at around four percent i believe so what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, okay, the rates, uh, I mean, yeah, they are stable, you know, probably around 4 point something-ish to around the high of around 7%-ish. But you know, this brings us to, you know, some thoughts, you know. Are you looking for higher returns, you know? Do you have the higher risk appetite to handle, you know, even higher returns? And do you want exposure to foreign markets, you know, as in Chinese markets, which I spoke about just now? And can you stomach that volatility in the short term, you know, and hold for the long term? So if you actually satisfy all these uh, criteria here, I don't see any reason why you know you should just put all your retirement savings into here. You know, might as well allocate a certain percentage. You know, it doesn't have to be a big percentage. You can choose like maybe ten percent or five percent. It's really up to you. But to me, I just put in the whole uh, eligible percentage that is actually uh, uh, allowed by EPF. And you know, even they themselves actually set quite a conservative. Uh, uh, eligible percentage you know if you have to read through the uh, documents that they have as well as the guide that they put on their website uh, i'll link the their website and their guide in the description below but you know this will just be a uh, overview of you know of shortcuts to people who are who fit this uh, bill of criteria as well as you know they just want to like you know allocate it like, asap without like wasting uh, much time and opportunity costs and voila we have our epf mis which is the members investment scheme so this here is a screenshot from the KWSP website or EPF website. So moving on, this is where you get access to a whole bunch of funds. So this screenshot here is actually a uh, screenshot from FSM1, which is Fund Supermark 1. So these are the top 10 best performing funds, as you can see here. As you can see in the graph, you know, for the past 10 years, it's actually been, you know, going up. Because, you know, equity markets, they tend to go up, you know. I know there will be people talking about you know, Japan and other markets, but... At this moment, I'm looking more towards the China side, and I think we can all agree that you know Chinese companies are gonna do big in the future, especially with you know the tech companies as well as you know the other ones out there, you know. And you know, uh, 
there's a mix of also local or overseas holdings. So you know, if you're not into you know China or other kinds of markets, you have also you know riskier local holdings like you know small cap stocks. So this is just to give you an overview you know, of what kind of uh, unit trusts or mutual funds you can actually throw into. So these are just the top ten, you know. But if you want something outside of these top ten, you you are okay to do that as well, you know, as long as they're approved by EPF. And now that you're convinced, you know, of why we need to diversify our EPF holding, let's move on to you know how do you do it. Easy. Log into your EPF account first. Go to the investment tab. And then you know you'll see your typical account info here, which is account one and two. Move on to this part where you click here to start investing now. And this window should appear if you're eligible. So if you're not eligible, it will show an error saying that you know you do not fulfill the criteria or you don't have the proper eligible amount. So don't worry, you know, you can try again like probably next month or a few couple more months to see whether you are fit, you know, for the criteria. So over here, you will see the eligible amount that you would have. For me, it's around 1,000 ringgit. So FMI here will be, you know, what uh, fund manager you would like to uh, invest in. I think I could be institution. So this could be, uh, for example, principal asset management. This could be uh, Kananga and you know, so on. Fund in this case could refer to any fund which is invested in, you know, perhaps a Malaysian small cap companies fund, or it could be like a, you know, uh, US equities fund or even Chinese equities fund and moving on so once you have clicked you know what kind of uh, company you want and the funds you want it will show you, you know how much is the minimum initial investment how much is the subsequent investment you know what's the fund volatility rating what's the return rating yeah so there's a lot of info you can actually click on the view what view fund info to actually see uh, all the different kinds of info out there as you can see, even uh, all these additional info are available, which is the fact sheet, the prospectus, the product highlight sheet, and a lot of other info if you want. But basically, based on what I actually uh, dug through uh, FSM1, Funds Puma, I find that you know in within the top 10 chart, I actually did this a few days back, so maybe the rankings have changed. So basically, what I find is that for the top 10, uh, these two actually come to mind if you are into overseas markets, so in this case, Chinese markets. So if you are uh, a non-Muslim, so you can go for the Principal Greater China Equity Fund. Uh, so and whereas if you are not a Muslim who is into you know Sharia uh, compliant equities, then I would suggest going for East Spring Investment Dynasty Equity Fund. So basically, these two have actually a uh, really decent uh, high returns over a period of ten years. So that's how I used to judge it because you know we want it for the long term, you know, for our uh, investments uh, savings to actually build up. So yeah, these two are my choices. So if you have other choices, yeah, do go ahead with them. But I think the shortcut for me is basically uh, gauging uh, the 10 year compounded annual growth rate. Once you're sure you know how much amount you're gonna allocate to you know uh, each fund. So actually you're not just you know limited to just a uh, one fund to invest in, you see. But for me, because I like to concentrate my holdings in just you know a few, but in this case I only got thousand ringgit right and the minimum is 500 so i'm just going to throw my whole 1000 ish ringgit into this particular fund here and i'm just going to proceed to check out so you have all the terms and conditions if you're okay with it then you just click okay you proceed on and it will bring you to the website of you know the uh fund which you are actually going with so in this case i'm going with uh principal asset management so basically i fill in all the details you know my name gender and everything else here just click next and you know they ask you to rank what your risk uh, appetite is for me it's moderately aggressive click on the uh, another term again and accept the risk you will proceed to uh, verify certain already fill in details and you may have to fill in uh, certain additional details and you know if you're okay with all that once again you know click your red understood accepted confirm and you will have to proceed with the OTP put it in, submit, and you are roughly done where you come to this uh, final window where it will show you, okay, uh, how much you will be investing in and you know how much sales charge that is. I think it's because uh, it's a partnership with EPF, so the sales charge is zero. Uh, and then you have your referral details as well as, well as your uh, campaign code here. Uh, I'll be actually brief on these two. So for referral details, can use for you know from any friend or family member who has done it. But I thought I'll provide mine below where we can both benefit actually from this referral. 
And for the campaign code, uh, there's actually one which is actually ending uh, by end of February, you know, I think it's a Chinese New Year promo, I'll share it in a while more, bear with me. So as you can see here, for the referral code for mine, it's actually over here. If you don't, if you don't want to use mine, it's okay as well, just use any friend, any family's one, it's totally good man. Just remember that it's actually uh, up to the end of uh, this year. Uh, perhaps they might come up with you know another uh, with more referral codes next year. Who knows? But yeah, do uh, take this opportunity. And about the uh, campaign code that I talked about earlier. So for this one, as you can see here, there's actually different different uh, rewards in terms of a percentage of how much you uh, use for the uh, fund, where they will actually rebate you in terms of uh, touch and go uh, credits, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, as mentioned earlier, it will end at end of February, so do yeah, take this up. So the campaign code is actually what are oh and also one more thing before I forgot for the referral code here, this is only applicable only if you know you are putting in three thousand. So in my case, even if I do have a referral code from someone, it actually uh doesn't work because I'm only putting in around thousand ringgit. So yeah, please do bear that in mind. And moving on, so it, once you have put in all the uh, necessary codes you can actually just click agree and continue and you know once you have uh, put the TAC which is the OTP code and you proceed you would get an approval summary as like this and you know that's all about it voila you're done it's just as simple as that I know it does sound very draggy long but I know I, I think the draggy part just comes to more of the fun you know, research uh, because you know there's a lot of things to read through and all but you know, once you actually uh, certain what you invest in, how much you allocate, it's pretty much a breeze, probably in 5-10 to 10 minutes if you're fast enough to fill in everything. And so yeah, if you do appreciate you know what you are seeing and listening, do give the channel a like, you know, subscribe, and do share it out. And press the bell icon you know, if you have more notifications. Thanks for watching. This is Cheech signing off from Cheech Thank you. See you next time.